Mind Your Subconscious is the podcast that provides you with techniques and knowledge about your subconscious mind. The part of your brain that lets you control your ego and create an extraordinary reality with your thoughts. We invite meditation, hypnosis, NLP, EFT and other experts to help you master the most powerful part of your brain. Your host is Jennifer Schlüter, who quit her job as managing editor of 22 newspapers to travel the world and work online just after one hypnosis session. A nomad ever since 2016, Jennifer is now a certified hypnotist and helps people transform their dreams into reality. Hello, happy Monday and welcome to your newest episode of Mind Your Subconscious. Today we have an absolutely amazingly accurate tarot reader with us and she uses her subconscious mind to read tarot. Aren't you curious now? Well, give the podcast a listen and find out. So hello everyone, this is Jenny with Mind Your Subconscious and today we have a very special guest, her name is Jamie and I actually met her through my virtual assistant and uh, Jamie, go ahead and introduce yourself please. What do you do? Okay. So my name is Jamie. The name of my business is terribly accurate um, because I give tarot readings that are super accurate. People often think my name is Glee, but it isn't. And the purpose, the reason why I do this, um, I do it by channeling, is to help people out of their struggles to find their more spiritually guided path to make decisions that better their life. Because the more happy people we have walking around the world, the higher the vibrational frequency of the world and therefore, the better world we all live in. Yay. And can you explain to us what does this have to do with the subconscious mind, what you do? So a lot of what I'm doing is I'm tuning into the subconscious mind of either yourself, somebody you're asking a question with, about, or, um, you know, different situations. So tarot, people believe that it's telling the future, but a lot of the future is determined by our own free will or by our subconscious programming that leads us towards a particular set of predicted outcomes. So is it always 100%? Yes, based on um, where we're currently at, right? And also because I'm channeling spirit guides and angels that see forward and backward in time. However, at any point in time, you can change your path to manipulate an outcome. So if, for example, you ask me, um, should I take this job? And I tell you, here's what's going to happen if you do. And then you decide to take it anyway, and it was a negative outcome. Um, you're going to probably experience that negative outcome, right? But if you don't, then all of that is negated. There's a lot of things that are dictated by our free choice, but our free choice isn't as free as we believe it is because of our subconscious programming. So, okay, let's say I'm going to ask you a question and I, let's, let, let's stick with the job example, right? Let's okay. say, should I, should I take this job? And then you say, this is, is going to have a negative outcome. And if you don't, it's going to have a positive outcome. But if I change my subconscious beliefs in that process before I take the job, is it obviously going to have a positive outcome? Well, that depends. Some things are just not for us, right? Sometimes we've already learned a lesson and sometimes things are just not intended to be. Uh, however, often, and that's really to go on a little separate tangent before we come back to your question, is the difference between a really great tarot reader versus somebody who's maybe mediocre or okay at it or not very good at it at all is to kind of pick up on those nuances and change the way that we're asking a question. Yes or no questions are not typically the best questions to ask. Um, it's more, how do I achieve this outcome that I want? They can tell you specifically what kind of subconscious programming that you have that needs to be amended and how to do it. And even more specifically, why is it? that I need to change this? What about it isn't working for me right now? Um, and then is this some sort of programming that only works in certain situations versus others? It might serve you really well, some idea or mindset you have in a love relationship, but not so well in your workplace environment. Okay. And then now again, just to make this clear, I want our audience to understand what 
does tarot have to do with channeling? Because some people think like, oh, it's only pulling a, drawing a card and then telling you whatever is on the card and reading from a book or, you know, having learned whatever information is on the book. No, tell us what you do and why you're such an accurate tarot reader as I have experienced myself. <laughs> well, thank you for saying that. Um, so I guess everybody reads it different. There might be some people who just pull a card and read it from the book. Personally, I'm channeling the messages. So for example, I'm just gonna grab a card here. Um, this is the Queen of Swords, who is known for being sort of cutthroat, right? Like she's got, I guess, a lot of life experience. So she's kind of like, oh, I don't play. Like I've been there, I've done that, I know what to do. So some people would just interpret this as, you know, a biatch kind of card. Like, hey, this means you're being a snot. But at the same time, when you're channeling while doing this, I might pull this card and it could mean something completely different. For me, as an intuitive channeling reader, the cards are more of a pictorial representation um, in order for me to remember the things I want to touch on. Because when you're channeling information, um, it's a lot faster than your own thoughts. I mean, imagine how fast the thoughts we have all day are going. Multiply that by 10 or even 10,000. And it's like, oh my gosh, there's all of these messages at once that I need to share with my client if I have a visual reminder in my hand in order to say, oh yeah, I wanted to touch on that. Oh yeah, they also said that. That's more what the cards are for. The cards themselves have no magical power. Um, they're more of just little reminders. So I could do the same work without cards, but I might forget to tell you something. I could do it with, um, you know, dice or with um, tea leaves if I had a system in which I noticed that this tea leaf is this kind of energy, you know, if I were to assign them certain meanings to jog my own memory. Okay. And so now what do you call the source, the thing, the, who, who are you channeling? So personally, I, um, I guess I call them angels because I only deal with beings of light and love. It's happened in the past where someone will say, hey, I want a reading to know how to put a hex on somebody. And coming from a non-judgmental space, I would say, you know, hey, um, I'm not telling you this is right or wrong, but I literally can't even because they won't give me that type of information. There are some things sometimes that they will refuse to tell us, <laughs> unfortunately. I mean, it sucks when you're looking for answers, but that's just the way that it goes. Sometimes, for example, if they say, hey, um, your soulmate has orange hair and brown eyes and a lot of freckles and he works a mile to the east of you and he drives a blue pickup truck, that might make your destiny sort of, um, you might shoot yourself in the foot if they were to give you super specific information like that, um, just because there might be somebody you're intended to meet in advance of this person to learn a lesson so that later you can have a better relationship with that person and you'll be throwing everybody to the side that doesn't match that description and therefore delaying the time in which you would meet this person, right? Because there might be a series of events you have to go through first to be ready. Um, but that being said, there's other times that they're very, very specific. Um, they can be when it's not going to harm you, when in fact it's going to help you. Give, for example, um, detail. I had a client who was uh, trying to conceive. She had done in vitro, she had done all these things, and they said, you know, on this specific date is the date that you're, you know, you have like an 80% chance of getting pregnant. So this would be the day or it's just not going to happen and you should stop spending money on in vitro. And sure enough, she got pregnant and now her baby is two and a half and on that day. And also I predicted my mother's death to the hour, which was, um, I mean, we wouldn't do that for something we weren't expecting, but she was you know, chronically ill. We knew she was in the last phases. And this was very helpful for my family, just because then we knew for people who had to fly in what that timeline is. That's not something doctors are going to give you because they don't want to be wrong, you know, and we don't know. But Tarot, for example, can tell us, hey, this is how much time you have. So you are able to have those precious special moments with a loved one or something before they pass. Wow, that is incredible. So how is your family dealing with your gifts? 
You know, the interesting thing is, I think it's just sort of normal. It's always sort of been there in its own way. Um, we grew up in a house that other people didn't want to watch when we were out of town. They thought it was haunted. It's just always been one of these things. And it was something that I turned off for a long time. Um, and then when I was pregnant with my second child, some strange fellow appeared to me in these random different spaces. And usually I don't talk to strangers. Like one time was in a Target. Um, one time was, I don't know, just like random public places. But he said, hey, um, you have this gift and you need to get back in touch with your spiritual side of your life. And I said, no. <laughs> and then he said it again. And I thought, you know, here's the thing, strange guy. Um, I understand that you feel this way and maybe there's some sort of purpose or meaning, but if I grow and develop these inherent abilities that we all have, it's just about learning how to use them. Um, you know, maybe I'm going to see things I don't want to see. And he said, well, you know, whether you choose, whether you see those or you don't, doesn't stop the fact that they exist. And I thought, well, that's super profound, right? But no, thank you. And I went about my life. But then as destiny works, right, as our life purpose kind of works, um, things happen, you know, the first domino is tipped over and then I'm pushed towards this. Everything I do, I have to end up coming back here. So here's where I am. I finally succumb to my life purpose. And this is what I do for a living now. But that being said, you know, he mentioned, well, whether you choose to see them or not, they exist. The actual truth in my experience, what I've learned is you don't have to see things like that. You don't have to communicate th with things like that. And I do have clients occasionally that say, you know, so-and-so put a hex on me. I think they're, um, you know, they put a spell on me. Some other psychic told me this or told me that. And the thing is, is other people's energies can't really affect you so much if you don't believe that they can. So a lot of this all comes back to our subconscious mindset and what our truth is, what we believe. If I believe that somebody can have power over me and my free will, absolutely I'm giving that power away. But if I don't have a belief system that supports that, then it's absolutely false. Nobody can touch my energy. Very true. And so since we talked before, I want to touch on that. You said you have no anxiety. Because you're one of the few people probably, you know, like there's nowadays, there's lots of people who are saying they have anxiety or whatever because of social media or whatever is happening to them. You have never had it and you don't have it. So I want to touch on that real quick and uh, yeah, let us know how that works for you. So I'm not sure if it's just because I have a belief system that allows me to have a lot of faith in that which you can't see, um, or the mindset that, you know, if I'm still alive right now, I therefore have a 100% success rate of getting through every sort of drama, trial, you know, tribulation in my life. So there's no reason for me to fear the future. I know that I'm guided and supported because I'm tuned into that. Um, I might not understand why or how bad things happen to me or to anybody else, but there is always a purpose. I don't even believe that bad things exist, which is another mindset I think that um, supports that. I think things can feel bad, but they're either for the, our highest good or they create good, right? So for example, here in America, there's a lot of people who do not care for our current president, right? Uh, he's racist or whatever. Um, that feels bad. It definitely does. But the good thing to come from this is it shines a light on what our issues are that we have, you know, historically hidden under a rug and just kind of gone on and with our day and just said, you know, let's be a little complacent. Yeah, that's, that's a bummer, but it's not really real. It shines a light on it so we can institute change. Absolutely. I agree. And um, so tell us how you grew up and because you said those gifts were always there for you. You know, um, I don't know if it's just because my mother was sort of tuned into that or not. Um, I guess it was just always kind of a normal thing. I wouldn't necessarily see 
ghosts or anything like that aside from what we all see as children which I usually call the shadow people where it's like kind of like that feeling somebody's looking around your door <laughs> something like that um but just strange things would always happen um there would be this is a silly silly example but there was a spirit that I couldn't necessarily see but and I put toaster when I put toast in the toaster in the morning before school um, it always popped back up and it was a brand new toaster. The toaster wasn't broken. And I'd say, I'm going to be late. And then it would allow my toast to toast. <laughs> Silly things like that. So a lot of times they just want to be acknowledged. Um, so I guess that's kind of how I always knew. And so because it was so normal for us in my household, um, which was my mom and my sister and I, my dad died when I was eight. Um, I, I guess we never really... I guess I never thought twice about it, but it wasn't necessarily something that you talked about a lot. It was because, but it was normal. I mean, we don't talk about, you know, our daily routines very often. We don't, so I didn't realize it wasn't necessarily the norm until I grew up and lived apart, I suppose. Okay. And what made you stop um, then? I don't know that I ever really stopped. Um, as a child, I wasn't channeling necessarily or anything like that. And as a kid, this, the thing is, is it's so much more natural. We don't know that we're doing it. It's more instinctual. Around three years old or so, most people kind of turn that off. Some of them can't. Um, some of them don't ever. <laughs> But we all have those abilities in there. And I think the key to really recognizing or growing your own abilities is trusting your own instincts, your own intuition, really having faith in that. Um, but easier said than done, right? Absolutely. And uh, so when you said you predicted your own mom's death and have you done that for clients and how do they react? Are they also like compose and are they like okay you know like now we have these last hours or are they freaking out is that crazy to them like how do they react to something like that i haven't often done that for most clients i mean there's been clients that will ask things like um hey my dad's health is taking a turn for the worse how much time do you think i have with him and um so i guess one of the more recent times that this had occurred the answer was more well that depends on your dad's spirit and his will um he could live many more years he just doesn't want to so you know sort of depends on his free will and his choices um but here's what you can do to try to uh, make him feel a little bit more content with earth life right now i suppose um so i mean i don't know so much if that's something that i often do but I could do it. Sometimes we might not get an answer. Sometimes they might not tell us because it would be spooky. If it's something that's going to harm you or create anxiety for you, they're probably not going to tell you. If it has something, for example, I had a client once that um, asked me about a celebrity's dating life and they straight up said, that's not your business. <laughs> so, oh my God, I mean, Yeah, it's, it's a little bit silly sometimes when it pops up. And so for people um, who maybe they always had these gifts and they are not using them or whatever, what would you recommend for them to do? Or if somebody says, or listening, isn't it listening to this podcast right now and says, hey, I want to channel some angels as well, what would you recommend? That's a tricky question. And that's actually one of the things that I would maybe do in a reading for a person is to figure out what the best modality for them is. So for example, some people might get a lot out of meditation, whereas another person wouldn't. Um, everybody has their own gifts. Many people have multiple gifts, but they have one that's the strongest. So for example, with me, it started mostly as clear, um, clear cognizance, which um, is almost as though you have a knowing of something, but you don't know why. To me personally, and other people might experience it differently, I could tell that it wasn't my own thought process, that it wasn't my own human bias or my imagination, because it was a thought that would like appear above my right eyebrow. We don't often realize where our thoughts are coming from in our brain, they're just happening, right? They're sort of all over. So when I could tell that the thought was right here, almost in a clairvoyant way, 
but um, I'm not necessarily seeing an image with it, like a clairvoyant would, then um, that was being channeled. And can you give but, us an example of a thought like that? Um, so if I'm giving you a reading, for example, and you say, hey, which chakra do I need to clear or cleanse right now? And I might see in my mind or have a thought right here that is your orange sacral chakra. So I could pass that information to you, knowing that it's not just a guess that I have. But as I developed and practiced my um, trade more and more, I don't necessarily get my thoughts there anymore. I can just tell that I'm tuned into the energy. You can feel the energy flow through you. For me, it's um, often starts from the top to the bottom and then it'll rotate sideways. So right now I can tell that my hand chakras are really, really lit up um, and that they're passing energy sideways. So I know that right now I can channel information should I choose to do so if you had a question, for example. Um, but a way that you could test this, maybe it is by sort of trying to create like a color or a shape of energy between your hands and then passing it to somebody else. Oftentimes they can guess what it is really accurately. And that would be a good indicator of maybe what some of their own skill sets might be. It might be energy healing. They might be a good channeler. Some people are clairaudient where they they hear things. Oftentimes the way that angels start to um, pass information to you clairaudiently is through song. You might get a song stuck in your head, a specific part of it. Um, and a fun fact about that, because that's one of my favorite ways that they pass messages along, is if you don't like the song, you can change it. I had a, um, a period of time where it was constantly like, don't worry, be happy, when I had a lot of stress, right? And I, I'm like, I hate that song, can you change it? And then they changed it to that Pharrell song, um, I'm so happy, <laughs> or whatever, yeah. and I was like, thank you, that's great, it's way better. <laughs> That is funny. Okay. So when you channel other people's angels or guides or whatever it is, how do you do that? What's your process for that? I guess I just ask. I just automatically tune into it. I don't even, I don't have like a ritual so much. Um, I know that rituals are very important to certain people. And I don't know if it's just because I'm so confident in what I'm doing that I can automatically just connect. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's kind of it. And that's also why you don't necessarily need to go be face to face with a reader who does read that way, who's channeling, because angels have an omnipresence, right? Like everybody has at least two angels that are there with you at all times that they are um, just kind of standing behind you. And then other ones might show up for the assist from time to time in a certain situation. Um, but they're always everywhere at once. Their energy is fluid that way. So I can connect to it, even if we're thousands of miles apart, which is actually really fun. I didn't even know Mauritius was a country until I had a client from there. <laughs> yeah, nice. So me and Jamie, we have exchanged services before we did this podcast interview because we wanted to find out like how our services are and how we do things. And we found out a few cool things. So Jamie, I'll let you start on what you found out. So I wasn't sure what to expect, but um, we're essentially doing the same thing, just in a different modality. It was hard for me because I think I expected hypnosis to be completely different than channeling, to sort of go, oh wait, it's the same thing. And um, just allowing things to flow that way. So walking into it, I guess I assumed that for sure, I had a past life um, because I had asked before because I'm not one to believe that everybody has one. So I had asked my cards before, have I had a past life? And they were like, yeah, okay, yeah. Um, what had, what did I do in my past life? And they're like, exactly the same thing as now. So I was like, okay, that's probably why I'm still doing this. Um, but now it's different um, in the context of what I learned in the hypnosis with you. What did you learn? Um, so it was very, it was channeling, but the questions that you were asking were very different than what I might ask about myself in tarot. So they're very existential, kind of like bigger 
things. And so it turns out my past life, I was not in a human body. Um, I was just existing as a soul or a spirit or um, I think I can't remember a million percent what we said in the hypnosis session, but um, it was like a ball of light or a ball of energy. Yeah, energy. And also I want the audience to know, so we started off with questions that Jamie had that were, um, you know, that were relevant for her personal life. Um, if you want to, you can share the questions. Um, I don't remember where we started with that, but I just remember it took this like giant turn. <laughs> yeah, because, so I remember it was about your back, something, uh, um, a pain in your back. Oh yeah. Then it, it was something else, um, about a person. So this is the two questions that we started out with. And then since Jamie is so great at channeling, she channeled what I call the masters and she calls it angels. But you can ask, ask these beings or souls, whatever it is, whatever you want to call it, you can ask them existential questions. And so that's what I went for. I went in deep. I was like, where do we come from? Like, you know, like, and then um, Jamie was talking about how she was a, a, a light soul, so to say, or a ball of energy that comes into people's lives when they have depression or when they have negative thoughts, a lot of negativity going on in their lives. And then also for me, I thought as a past life regression is that as a past life regression is that everybody has past lives because that's what I've experienced. But so it came out that Jamie only was into people in people's lives for a few like months in the past or for a few years. And for me to find that I was very great too. Also, Jamie's perspective on past lives was, you know, we're so many people right now on this earth that not everybody of us can have had a past life maybe. So there's still obviously truths to be discussed and to be researched and to be heard. Um, but what we got was really amazing and we had a really great session. We did. It was super interesting. Um, it's, it's funny because I've always had this sort of, um, I despise the cold. I don't, I live in a snowy place and I don't really like snow, but I always feel this like deep um, love and joy when the snow first falls and it's almost glittery and it's just clean and nobody's driven over it yet. I love that. And I never understood why. And then when they were kind of describing like almost what heaven is like, and it was like this um, sort of snowy landscape, but the snow is warm and it's sunny and it's softer than your like favorite blanket. And I was like, oh, that makes sense. Now I get why I some why I like snow for that half a second when I usually hate it. Yeah. I can totally relate to all of what you just said. Like I, I also don't like it. And also I wanted to mention when I had my tarot uh, session with Jamie, um, at first, um, cause I was like, you know, I'm, I'm kind of done with tarot. I kind of, I've had a few readings and I, for some reason, I didn't want to do, I don't know. I wasn't called to it anymore. And then I did the session with Jamie and I realized very, very quickly that she was not only reading the cards, she was channeling um, because she was also always mentioning they, so she calls it angels. I call it spirit guides or whatever. So she always said, they say, they say, they say. And that's when I realized, oh shit, you can actually channel at the same time that you're reading tarot. And for me, that was also a very new experience. And what I liked about her readings, like I said, she was very quick and very accurate. And um, there were lots of things about me that she couldn't have known that she really called upon. So that was, it was also a great experience that way. And it was kind of fun because it was the first time that we're meeting. So I didn't know anything about you at all. I didn't even know, I still, maybe I still don't even know what country you're in right now. <laughs> I just know it's not America. It is Germany at the moment. Germany. Very cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, we just wanted to share our services with, uh, with you and we wanted to share our mutual experience because it was, it was great. It was a good experience. Good exchange. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's kind of, um, the big takeaway for me is I don't think it matters how you connect to spirituality yes. Yes. that you can connect through whichever modality you want to. Some people really get a lot from being in nature. Some people through formal prayer, some people through, some people even through what they eat, um, through, you know, specific organic kinds of foods or vitamins, some people through rituals, some people through yoga. I mean, tarot, hypnosis, it, meditation, there's so Reiki, 
I mean, the list goes on and on and on infinitely. And I don't really think it matters which modality you use so long as you're connecting to that love light energy. I think that's the main takeaway. And I think that's why we see so many um, sort of woo woo spiritual um, service providers all of a sudden now, because many of us are waking up and going, hey, actually, this is a better way to live. This provides me the happiness and nourishment that I need. And it's okay if we all do it differently. Um, we can learn all of the different skills, you know, um, and then whichever one works for you in a different situation, for example, like sometimes tarot might be the answer. People use pendulums a lot. Like this is a pendulum, right? And it's good for yes and no answers. So this is a no. And then this is a yes. You see how I just say it and I don't move my hand, but it knows what to do. So, um, when I do that, like sometimes the answer isn't that simple though. So I might use multiple things in tandem. I might, you might have a question, um, does Chad love me? So the pendulum can say yes, but then maybe I pull cards and it goes, yeah, but as friends, not the way you think, <laughs> right? So, I mean, there's all sorts of different ways to connect to the spirit and whatever feels right for you is the right way. There's no wrong way to do it as long as you're doing it um, for, with a loving intent. Exactly. And then what I just, I, I just had a discussion with my brother about this too. So first of all, there's no right or there's no right or wrong way. There's just many different ways, but also there's not one name. Like you said, there's no many. So there's so many different religions. They all have different names for God. They all have different names for their 10 or, or whatever, how many ever many, I don't even know the English word right now. People to <laughs> anyway. Um, uh, yeah, they have, they all have different names. Then we all have different names for like the masters, the angels, the spirit guides, the whatever it is, like soul collective. We all have different names for it, but it also doesn't matter what you call them because you are experiencing whatever it is you want to call it. And as long as you're experiencing it, I think the great thing about it, it is making you happier. It is giving you a better form of life. It's giving you a better life. And that's all that matters, right? Like nothing else has to matter. I agree hundred percent with that. My thought is God, Allah, or even if you watch Shameless, like, like they call it him, right? It's a she and it's a him. Who knows? Um, my thought is that God is energy or this concept of God, right? Because it explains every theory about, you know, energy can neither be created nor destroyed. This is where even collective consciousness, if we're, maybe we're all a piece of God, right? God is within us or, I mean, I don't know. It, it explains um, omnipresence. How is God or angels or whatever, all places and all knowing at all times. So it doesn't matter if you can call it the universe or if you call it energy or you know, it just is. And I think it's all the same for all people. And so we don't necessarily need to label it. And I think that's where society at large, not to get existential about it, but that's where all of our issues come from, right? Like trying to label things. Trying to There's label no things and trying to prove things in a scientific way, because some things you can't prove yet, maybe yet, who knows, you know? Although it's really kind of fun to watch how science is starting to prove and validate a lot of these spiritual concepts, such as hypnosis, like, um, or even Reiki. Now hospitals are, I know that it's because in Minnesota is known for our medical care and that's where I live. So um, hospitals now are offering Reiki to um, terminal patients, like cancer patients and insurance is not notorious for paying for things that don't have proven outcomes, but insurance will pay for that now as part of your palliative, you know, care on your way to death. So, I mean, that's kind of interesting, right? It used to see, it used to be, oh, that's like shamanism. It's totally make believe. We're just going to wave our hands around you and you're going to be fixed. Um, but yeah, it does work. And now science is proving that. And it doesn't matter necessarily if it's just because I believe it, if I believe it, it's true. Right? Yep. Like as long as it's helping you do it, it doesn't matter how you call it or where it's from or whatever, as long as it's helping you, as long as you, it's making you feel better, then there's no harm in doing that. So I agree. And I think that's, you know, religion, why they sort of exist is more humans feel secure when they follow a plan. 
And so if we just leave it out there as it is with no sort of plan, um, now can we trust it or not? And so that's the journey that a lot of people are on and why it's important we find our own route, our own spiritual modality that works for us internally. And it doesn't matter what that is as long as the attention is one of love. Exactly. I agree. Love. It's, it's love. It's all about love. That's what it is. Yeah. Do you ever get overwhelmed, like uh, in a reading or in, in real life, like in general, I mean, in your life in general, do you ever get overwhelmed with all the messages you're receiving? I wouldn't say so. Um, I feel like when I'm working, I just automatically connect to that. And then I've kind of learned to shut it off unless I need it. So um, if I needed to make a decision and I wasn't really sure, I could ask in that moment, turn it back on and turn it back off. But I feel like it's rude to sort of walk around um, picking up on everybody's vibe all the time. It's an invasion of privacy and I would never do that. So it's a quick on and off all day. Okay. And for yourself, when you ask, like, are the, how, how are you receiving the decisions? Is it just like a knowing, like you said, because you're a uh, clear cognizant? It, it kind of depends. I've had it come through many different ways. Um, sometimes I will receive song lyrics to pass along to clients or for myself. Sometimes things come in the form of number messages. They come all sorts of different ways. And do you always, uh, can you, could you say that you always get the messages or are there sometimes times where you don't, where you miss it? Um, you know, I mean, sometimes messages will come through and without me wanting to, like I said, I don't ever want to invade somebody's privacy, diving too deep into somebody's history or something like that. I might share with a client, hey, here's the situation. And I'll ask them, does that make sense to you? Do you know what I'm talking about? Because I don't maybe want to go and look up something that might make them feel bad or embarrassed or ashamed, right? Especially because I do a lot of um, third-party kind of readings. You know, I'm cheating on my husband with this guy and this and this and this. And maybe they feel already embarrassed and ashamed when they're reaching out to a stranger for help, but they're so desperate that they need that, right? So it's my obligation to give them the calm and the peaceful sort of energy first and not go too far into things that maybe they don't want me to tap into. So that being said, um, if they can't place it, then I will go and I'll dig deeper. But oftentimes they're going to intuitively know this is what she's talking about and then I can move forward. So in certain situations, it can be a little broad or vague, but if I um, but so, but it doesn't make, it doesn't matter if it makes sense to me. It matters that it makes sense to the client. I might say, hey, um, you know that purple dress? I don't think you should wear it because it, it's going to make you feel sad. Do you know what I'm talking about? Um, or maybe why you shouldn't do that? Well, perhaps it was given to them, um, you know, in some sort of sad way. It was like their dead relative's whatever, and it makes them feel sad, but me telling them, hey, you know, wearing that makes you feel kind of junky. Maybe let's put that in a box somewhere, and if it's a treasure you must keep, something like that. It doesn't matter if I know why it's traumatic. It just matters that I'm able to pass the message. I don't know if that's very clear, if that makes sense. I think it does. I think it makes okay. sense. And now you're about to witness how accurate Jamie's readings and channeling really are. I just um, pulled three cards to find out what your, um, what your inner truth was in the past, in the current time, and what you're moving towards. Okay. And what I got was um, the inner truth that you had subscribed to in the past was that maybe you're not good enough. Yes. Um, and then currently, you're shifting that perspective. So it's still a work in progress. Yes. And then your um, inner truth or mantra moving forward is that everything is safe and secure and stable and I'm making connections with the right people. So you're actually on a super awesome path right now. Not only will you feel successful by going from where you were to 
um, where you're headed, but other people are going to notice that about you too. Should we do another one? <laughs> I mean, if you want, or maybe, um, maybe a better way to do it is to make affirmation statements and I can tell you how they're true or false. I am beautiful. Okay. So what they say about that affirmation statement is that you're almost like at this fork in the road where you have to make that decision for yourself, <laughs> where it's like a, a work in pro progress. Like part of you knows like, yes, I am beautiful, but you don't know how to go about affirming that in a more realistic way that is permanent for yourself. Right. Okay. Yeah. I don't know how to make myself more beautiful. I don't know how to, um, <laughs> you want to know what they say? They say for you, if you want to feel more beautiful, you need to get more sleep or better quality sleep. Yeah. Right now that is true. <laughs> <laughs> right now that is absolutely true. Okay. Next one. Um, I am emotionally stable. Ooh, this is an interesting one. So they say, um, well, you really want to be, but sometimes other people throw you off your game a little bit. Um, and, but you have to understand that true emotional stability means that other people can't throw you off your game. And so they're saying a part of you knows that, but you don't want to face it or think about it or deal with it. But that is, um, how we fully, fully achieve it. So they're not saying you're emotionally unstable, but they're more giving you the guidance on how to like master it, the mastery. Okay. Make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. And it, it is true. Sometimes I let other people throw my, myself off. So that's They true. say that the um, biggest challenge for you right now is um, confidence in what you're giving to others. They say that that's the hardest thing for you right now is how much do I give and how can I give this confidently? Um, and how do I know that what I'm giving to other people is really beneficial and that it pays off and that it makes you know, the world better? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Should I say another one? Sure. I am loved. I am loved. The way that this is true is that you're actively seeking out ways to validate that for yourself in ways that maybe you haven't before. You're noticing more. I mean, it's, it's obvious that you've been loved, right? Your whole life. But now you're actively seeking out ways to remind yourself of that. So that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. This is like super healing for you, actually, to do so. Awesome. That's good to hear. I'm thinking about what else we could do too. So what, well, I don't know, like what, which direction did you want the podcast to go? What do you want your listeners to get out of it? Um, I'm, oh, here we go. We could ask, what is it that they need to get out of this interaction? Yes. Okay. And they say it's um, for healing and for examining what it is they aren't talking about regarding their own feel feelings of failure or lack of success or acknowledgement by their community or their peers, their, their loved ones. So best way for them generally to do so um, is basically to keep doing what they're doing as far as their own personal growth goes. Listening to podcasts like this, um, doing meditation or taking nature walks, you know, taking care of themselves um, and doing their own personal growth on the earth plane while they're here. Acquiring knowledge essentially is like never stop learning. Great. Great. Okay, guys. So Jamie and I, we have something really, really special for you. We want to give you a tarot reading with Jamie and it's going to be on the 29th of September. That's a Sunday at 1 p.m. Central Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time, 2 p.m. 2 p.m. Eastern Time, and I'm going to put this all in the podcast uh, podcast description. 
And you can interact with Jamie. You can ask her one question each and you can ask her any question. Um, of course, you need to know that other people will be listening. And if you don't want anybody who's listening to know the answer to your question, then you shouldn't ask that question. But other than that, no questions are of limits, but only one question for each one of you. If you want to join us, again, it's on September 29th, um, 1 p.m. Central, 11 a.m. Pacific, and 2 p.m. Eastern Time. So the live is happening on Instagram. And if you follow me or Jamie on Instagram, which is Mind Your Subconscious for me and Terribly Accurate for me. If you follow um, either one of us, you're going to, you can um, turn on your notifications so that you will not be notified when there's a live happening. And also you can check um, in the stories on, on top um, when the live is up and you will be able to see it if, uh, once we have our live. I'm so excited. Yay, me too. Um, you have two children. How old are they again? 13 and 10. How are you raising them? Do you put, are, do, are, do they have the gifts as well? Are they aware of them? Do they live with them? What's the deal there? How are you raising them with the gifts? So the first one, um, the 13 year old, she sort of shut her gifts off when she, I remember this specific moment. Mm -hmm. um, she saw what she described was a scary bunny and never really connected again. Um, so occasionally she has interest in what I do, but um, she's not super interested. Now my son, for example, he's I think one of those that can't really turn it off. I never knew that I could actually see auras until one time I picked his little body up out of my bed to move him to his own and I could see it and it was different um, than you'd expect. It had little light flickers in it that went clockwise. Um, so I don't know if he's an alien or what, but. <laughs> I often think he's reincarnated. He had like a strong uh, um, attachment to the Buddha, which is something I'm a Muslim. So um, that he would never like have exposure to, I guess, like as a child, he always wanted Buddha figurines. So um, he's got some special gifts and talents. I used to have a service for some of my clients where um, every month I would pick a crystal of the month for them to match their vibrational energy to help them get through what the month was going to be like for them. Um, because of my tax person, she said it's not a good idea to mail things <laughs> anymore. I don't do that anymore. But um, I could give him a list of names and he could just go pick them accurately. Like whatever the spirit guides told me each client needed, he could walk around a thousand different crystals laid out on the floor and know who's with who. It was pretty cool. So maybe he'll walk down this path later. Maybe not. Um, tarot specifically, I don't think he's interested in, but he does kind of have that clear cognizance. Um, he knows all sorts of weird things about how electricity works as a toddler that I like Googled to see if it's true. I'm like, what is he talking about? Or with meditation, um, his sister as a kindergartner, they did a meditation in school to teach children how to self-soothe. And she said, mom, I just don't get it. Um, I don't know how to clear my mind. And I said, well, I don't know, because I don't really meditate. I said, just maybe imagine the picture black. And he could hardly speak at the time. But my little toddler, he was maybe two, says, you have to imagine the color white because it's the color of purity and love. And then we all just get little goosebumps. Oh, yeah, I already a little alien. Sounds sounds valid though. Yeah. <laughs> so I think he's automatically channeling already. He just doesn't doesn't know it yet. Okay, that's interesting. Um, and then one more question: since you just mentioned um, that you're a Muslim, how does it go with your belief as a Muslim? Like this, all this channeling. What do other Muslims say? Do they embrace it? What what's yeah, let me know. So I really don't tell um, my religious community that because people are always, 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 whether they're Muslim or Christian or whatever, um, or Jewish, afraid of things that they don't understand or know about, right? So, I mean, there's been times when I was reading cards at the Mall of America that somebody says, you're a sinner, you're gonna go to hell, like that's the devil's work. And you just have to ignore that because the truth of the matter is, 
for me, it just further validates my faith and it makes me actually closer to my faith because the reason, so for me, essentially my thought process and the reason why this religion fits best for me personally is that all my belief system is that all religions are valid, that throughout time, God, the same God that we all have sent different people to teach people things to different regions in time. Um, you know, basic moral tenets don't kill people, be kind, show love, let's feed the hungry, right? These kind of ideas. And that's what the actual basis of the religion is. So it fits best for me that way. There are different things like, yeah, you're not supposed to predict the future, but um, they say like, oh, that's a no-no, divination. But I don't really feel like I'm doing that. What I'm doing is I'm giving you a mirror into your subconscious, or I'm giving you a way to look at different situations, mindsets from a different perspective. So in the example where somebody says, hey, um, you know, should I, should I stay with my boyfriend? What does he really think about our relationship? I can say, well, here's what I'm picking up on as far as his thought process, his um, emotions and his intentions. Now that you have that information, I'm not really predicting the future. I'm saying, what do you think is the best choice for you? Like if we know that he never wants a marriage type relationship and children, and that's something you want, now it's up to you to decide how am I going to shift my mindset? Like, am I going to keep trying to make him change? That's never going to work. Or am I going to look for something else? Right. Or maybe it's the opposite. He, we're super aligned. Okay. Now, how am I going to feel about this? Am I going to stop worrying maybe about, you know, and panicking when there's no problem at all, those sorts of things. So it's, it's a little bit more of a blend of in certain ways, almost like therapy or counseling, but it's a lot about mindset, really. And it's giving you a mirror into your own subconscious. So I personally don't think that it's a sin. And I feel like for me, it's a form of prayer, right? Like it's constantly connecting to my faith. We can't, we can talk directly to God, but if God, in, and I think this is the truth in any religion, right? That if God talks directly to us, like it's so powerful, it would burn through us, right? And this is why we have angels, the go-betweens, right? And so they're sharing, you know, this wisdom with us. And in all texts, like in the basic Abrahamic faiths, you know, it's, hey, um, angels are there with you, supporting you, guiding you. This is why they're created. And so, I mean, I don't, I don't see any personal conflict with it, but if you were to ask somebody else, they would totally see a conflict with it. Um, but you know, I mean, people are always afraid of things they don't understand. If they truly knew what it was, I think it'd be different. And I actually have like a full um, notebook almost of all of these different things. I had this book idea once, but I don't think I'll ever get around to writing it, but it's more like, hey, um, so you're Muslim, right? But actually, no, just kidding, you're psychic. They would hate it, but other people might like the book. Like the way that we pray, we put our face down like in yoga, right? <laughs> like we're bowing down. This is good for our body. The time of the day that we have prayer, it's like right about when you're about to sin and make bad decisions. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't think there's a right or wrong faith for anyone. That's what works for me. And I don't think that tarot is evil at all. It's exactly opposite. It's connecting to angelic beings. All religions are essentially the same purpose. The purpose, it doesn't matter if you have one or if you're spiritual, as long as you're subscribing to this idea that the whole point is being a good person, loving other people, um, you know, standing up for injustices, right? Um, so we don't turn a blind eye. We say, hey, this is wrong. And, and we point at it. And I think that's like for our current time and environment, why we are going through the things that we're going through. Nothing is by accident. Nothing's coincidence. Um, everything happens for a reason. And maybe we can't see the reason right away. And so that's what tarot does, right? As it helps us understand the reason sometimes, but oftentimes, um, you know, then we come out the other side of it and hindsight is twenty twenty. An interesting thing for me is, you know, people ask me all the time, are tarot cards ever wrong? 
And maybe they think that I'm pretentious or that um, I'm overconfident when I say, uh uh, never. Um, but the reason why I say that, like, we can, as humans, interpret them wrong, but I don't think they're ever wrong. A good example is um, I had an on again, off again boyfriend for many years. And he's like, hey, I did all these things. Now, you know, I did a lot of personal growth. Now I'm the person that's like right for this relationship. Take me back. I read my cards and that my human side that knows better, you know, my logic is going, I don't think I want to go down this road again. Right. So I pull cards and they say, do it. And I'm like, that doesn't make sense. And they're like, just do it. And I said, well, how's it going to go? They go, it's going to be horrible. It's going to be chaos, but just do it. So because I'm so used to, you know, following their guidance, I do it. And actually, yeah, it was a horrible experience. Um, he started doing drugs, like all of these horrible things. He actually like beat me up, like in a drug rage, um, like grabbed me by my hair. He broke my car with my face. Isn't that crazy? So I had to have my, my nose repaired, totally crazy town. So why would that, why should I follow guidance to do that? Right. But I'll tell you why, because what it did for me after the fact was it forced me to really, really, really grow up and assess what's important to me. I already knew what was important to me, but it forced me to buy a house before that I was renting. Right. Now it's like, okay, I need to pick a permanent place because my address is going to be hidden from him and I don't want to have to keep going through that. And so now I'm a big, a big girl, right? Like I own property now as a result. Um, it made me change a lot of the ways that I do certain things. And now my life is really, really happy all of the time. And it wasn't even that long ago. So yeah, spirit might guide us to do things that don't feel right or that we kind of... Um, we're like, mm, I don't know. But if you really have that faith and that trust, they're never going to misguide you. I wouldn't be able to make the focus or have the trust that I'm on the right path had I not gone through those experiences. And that's actually um, a big thing that you'll notice with the most accurate psychics or tarot readers or tea leaf readers or whatever is they're going to have the most dramatic and traumatic life histories you could imagine. They will have lost children. Um, they will have witnessed other people's suicides. Maybe they were suicidal themselves. Huge stories of like abuse and trauma. But the reason why they have those things is because the people who need their assistance the most, to the point where I can't just talk about this with a friend or with a therapist. I need somebody to make me feel secure about the anxiety I have for my future moving forward. Um, when you're in that place of desperation and you really need that. So um, the reason why the, the most accurate people are going to be people who have experienced that is because they can more connect to your energy and have a full understanding of it and validate what you're feeling. And so it's really common that people cry in tarot readings because we'll touch on something sensitive and they always go, I don't know why I'm crying. And it's because we touched on a truth that you didn't know you had stuffed in the subconscious and we're releasing it now. So, um, for example, I can pull a card like this, that, um, this would say, okay, you know what? You're feeling hopeless. Okay. But if I didn't ever experience personally, what hopelessness feels like, if I had like a very rosy kind of, um, silver spoon type of life, I'm not going to be able to connect to their energy and receive intuitive insight in a way that is going to benefit them, right? I, I, if I haven't walked through or examined or witnessed certain things in other people's lives in my own life, um, I'm going to miss part of the message, if that makes sense. So specifically, um, it's interesting to me that certain clients could kind of come in waves. Like I'll have for maybe two months, everybody is that's guided to get readings from me might be in emotionally abusive relationships because I've been in that. I can, ex I can say, okay, so I understand that you, it looks like to other people, you're in a perfect relationship and you cannot um, even put into words what it is that you're feeling. Here's, you know, what they say and how it makes you feel, whereas it looks completely normal on the outside. I'm able to do that because I've experienced it or I've witnessed it, right? 
Um, whereas somebody whose life isn't like that and they're a tarot card reader, they're just like, yeah, it feels hopeless. Sorry. <laughs> hmm. You're feeling kind of sad, right? But not getting as in depth and to the core of what the actual issue is. And if we can't get in depth to the core of it, we can't find our way out of it. The key to changing any situation is knowing exactly what that problem is and where it stems from. I've had um, clients before that we realized doing like a deep dive um, that the reason why she sabotages many things in her life was because somebody in like her childhood made her think that it wasn't okay to be herself in one simple well-meaning comment, right? So now it's like, oh, I can only be myself in certain situations or myself has to adapt and change. And then there's a confidence crisis that affects romantic relationships, job opportunities, everything. And so, um, yeah, without having a reader who's had like a very full, full life, I, I mean, I can't say that they're inaccurate, but um, I don't know that you can do that deep inner subconscious work when you notice like, hey, this person is always spot on for me. That's probably why they've experienced something um, where they similar, so they can express more empathy and validate more of what you're feeling because they've had that broader knowledge base. It's, for example, if um, you've never seen the color purple, you could sort of describe it. You could sort of conceptualize what it is, right? But um, you couldn't go as far as somebody who's actually seen it. Who could describe you know a deep dark royal purple versus a lavender they say it's sort of red it's sort of blue and it's not wrong but it's not as precise and helpful okay I don't know if that sense. that's kind of a long-winded <laughs> explanation but got it so but put yourself back into the position when he actually smashed your car with your face well i'm sorry but what the fuck were you thinking when he did that were you like oh thank you spirits like thank you for this experience i still trust you or what was your thought process because i can't even imagine that so the weird thing was i wasn't like hey thank you in that moment right um but as you touched on before you're like oh you don't get anxiety or you're not afraid i don't know if part of that is um just because it's not my natural disposition like we kind of mentioned earlier or, I mean, I've had many near-death experiences. So my instinct was, if I play dead, he won't hit me anymore. Like, we don't continue to kick a, a dead dog, right? We just walk away. So we lived on a lake, and he would drive, and he it felt like he was driving around the lake. And then, like, he'd reach over and, like, check my pulse, and I'd just, like, pretend like I was dead or sleeping or passed out or whatever. Um, and then when we parked, then I stood up and I like booked it, like I ran. Um, but I wasn't, I wasn't like actually ever really afraid. I just like wanted him to stop. Like I knew at some point it had to stop. You're going to run out of, you know, cocaine fueled rage at some point, right? <laughs> Otherwise people wouldn't keep, wouldn't need to keep doing drugs. I mean, that's my assumption, but yeah, I mean, everything, everything worked out for the better. I mean, I learned that I, because prior to that, I was very, um, I can do everything myself, right? And so in those moments afterwards, it's like, okay, now I have to be open to receive assistance and help from the universe and from the people around me that love me and support me. So I don't know. I mean, in the moment, you're not necessarily thankful, but because it feels like garbage when you're in it, right? And all the stress that's afterwards. And to make things worse, it was hard to even call the police because he was a very well prestigious, um, known attorney. Everybody knew him, all of the cops, all of the attorneys. Oh, so it's like, God. what am I gonna do, right? Yeah. But I just had that faith and, um, and everything worked out really well. It all worked out super well for me. I, there's nothing, that I don't have or need or want that I don't. I'm very happy to hear that. Um, and glad you're here with us. <laughs> to Thank tell you. Us all about it today. All right, so Jamie, I wanna ask you what is next for you? What have you planned? What is going on in your life? What's, what's next? So I'm just gonna keep on doing what I'm doing for the most part. I intend to somewhere down the road create a secondary business called Joy Genie. It's already 
in motion, but I don't have a release date for that yet. That's more for my clients that need a lot of day to day coaching and hand holding. I did my certification in um, happiness coaching and life purpose coaching because those are the issues that my clients tend to have the biggest issues with, right? Um, so that will come out at some point. But other than that, just keep doing tarot and, you know, helping people through their OF moments, <laughs> making the best decisions that they can for the most divinely guided path, you know, that they can walk down. Beautiful. I love it. Uh, where can our audience find you? Um, YouTube.com slash terribly accurate or terriblyaccurate.com is my website spelled T-A-R-O-T-B-L-E-E-A-C-C-U-R-A-T-E. -E -E. Um, thanks for having me today. You're very welcome. Thanks for being on the show, on the podcast. Um, yeah, so that's it. And we wish you all a great rest of your week and tune in next week. Before you guys sign off now, I just wanted to remind you of Jamie's and mine's live on September 29th at 11 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Eastern, and 7 p.m. European, Central European time. So note or um, write down a question and come prepared with your question to our live tarot reading. We look forward to having you. And now I wish you a very great and awesome week.